Today we're going to look at managing a youth baseball team lineup and also getting set up on this lineups template Google Sheet at the beginning of the season. We're going to go through how to enter your roster, your schedule, and then setting up a lineup for your first game. The first thing you want to do is to go up to the file menu and then make a copy so you can put it into your own Google Drive. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. You can maybe take off that file, name a copy off, off of the end and clip off this copy of from the front. You could save it in your Google Drive, maybe if you have a specific folder for baseball, and select that and make a copy. And once Google saves this document to your Google Drive, you could start editing it. You'll notice you're in a brand new tab over here, so we're just going to go and close this tab, the old one. And here, you're in your new spreadsheet for your, for your team's lineups. So this first sheet gives you some instructions. Um, I won't read them here, but when you do the process yourself, you can do that. But what you want to jump into right away is the schedule. And uh, that's the second tab down here and put in your team name. So uh, if right at the top of my head, uh, favorite team, grew up with them, Red Sox. Uh, the rules level is automatic, okay? And that A level, double A level, or triple A level will come in based on the rules down in the rules uh, tab, which if we click over to, you can take a peek at. This has to do with the minimum play rules and an equal play for the players. So if there are requirements for uh, playing the infield for a, an inning or two, uh, or maximum number of innings that any one player could play in any one position, uh, or the number of innings that any one player could play uh, more than anyone else. And that's typically one. So you want uh, as equal play as you can get. Those are already set for this A division and uh, the other spreadsheets in the resources folder will have um, these rules preset for the different divisions. So we're going to go back to the schedule where we added our team name. And then we're going to uh, add a couple of dates. So if we've got uh, the, the fall weekend coming up for opening day and you've got a, a 1 o'clock game, you're the visitor against the opposing team, let's just say it's the Yankees. And the result, this is just an example. Anytime you enter a, an L or W in here, let's say you won 2 to 1, it's going to turn green. If it's a, a loss, it's a loss, let's say 8 to 4 or 4 to 8, whichever way you want to put it, it will find the L and make it red. And the game didn't happen yet, so we're going to delete that for now. And these are notes that uh, you can put in after the game so you can keep track of who earned game balls or who who did well, who needs work at practice the next game, uh, I'm sorry, the next week, and uh, so on. So anyhow, now to the roster. Okay, these are all examples put in. Uh, you want to stay within this red box. Everything outside of this red box regarding game tracking and batting position counts uh, and the batting order position is all automated. Okay, plate appearances down here are actually manually entered. You can reference your game changer account for that so you can keep track of uh, let's say if player one had three plate appearances but player two who's at the bottom of the lineup only had two that game you know over time you're going to see which players have a uh, plate appearance per game average that might be lower than the rest of the team and you could bump them up in the lineup to uh, get them more time uh, at bat same with uh, batting positions this is manual okay you can keep track over time who's the game leadoff, who is the cleanup hitter, who is the last batter, and again, if you see uh, players always in that last position over time, then you want to make some adjustments to make sure they're not always batting last. And um, then the same with game balls. I like to track uh, which game balls were given out and put a little note in here. You can just you know, right click and um, right click in the cell and hit insert note, and then you could type a note for. Um, great batting and give them the game ball and then over time you track how many game balls these players have earned um, same with pitch counts you can reference game changer for that very important to see 
if you've got a pitcher throwing almost every game, um, maybe they need a rest here and there, uh, mental reset, all of those kinds of things. This is for you to track and, and take a look at over the course of the season. But let's start by adding our players' names in here. So if it was uh, my name, and my player identifier is kind of like a nickname. Okay, you just put in the, the player's uh, nickname or maybe it's their formal name. However you want to be entering that on the game lineups in the future, this is what you want to set. So the first thing you want to do in here is delete these fake players out of here. Okay, so you can delete them one by one or you can just highlight them all. And there they go. Okay, so you enter a few names in here and uh, then you'll be able to pull these players into the lineup. Okay, so I've entered in my roster here, which is sort of a dream team of uh, players. I don't belong on this team, but I'm going to stick with, with it anyway for this demo. Uh, anyhow, now that my roster is in this red box, uh, you'll see that if we go to game one and we start to enter our lineup in here, Let's say we're going to start off with uh, with Ken Griffey Jr. batting. We just enter Ken, which is his player identifi identifier from the roster. Remember this this first name or this column, the player identifier will pull in their information, and it will pull in all, all of the times that they've played certain positions throughout the season. So we want to fill in this lineup according to who we want to bat at any spot in the order and we want to do that as step one alright so I've entered all the players into the lineup but for this particular game uh, Rick and Mick aren't going to be in the game so what we want to do is instead of number 11 in the batting lineup Mick is going to be out so you would type the word out and then Rick will be out so you type the word out Okay, that will show that they are not in the game, that they will not track this game or their positions. And you can go ahead and delete that number 13 or delete these cells that have the word out of them because you've only got 12 players on your roster, two of them are out, so you can leave those blank. Uh, once you have the batting lineup down, and you can see all of their information over to the right here carried over, their jersey numbers and their... Uh, names for the lineup card to be printed and and handed to both your opponent and your other coaches during the game uh, You could start filling in their positions for every inning um, And again, you know when you've got a, a team of, of Kids that you want to be rotating around in different positions according to either pl Minimum play rules or putting them in the in a position where they're going to have the most success then this matrix this grid will help you keep track of those positions uh, especially during the game if you have a whiteboard in the dugout to where you or a clipboard where you printed this out that will help the kids and the bench coach know where they belong on any given inning so let's start out Ken in in uh, left center field for the first one and for uh, these little league rules are playing 10 players in the field so you've got a left center fielder right center fielder in, instead of just a straight center fielder. Uh, we'll put uh, Barry in left field, and, and you can see these are bright pink because according to these rules down here, the equal play rule, the infield play rule, they haven't played the infield yet, so you're going to have to put them in the infield in uh, one of the future innings to make sure that that rule is not violated. And let's say the next inning we put Barry at first base, you'll see that the first base um, uh, designation is there and he he has got to play the infield twice for this division again these are all automated so it's it's staying red letting you know that hey he, he's only played one inning in the infield so say okay uh, let's put him in first base again in the fourth inning alright so now it's not red anymore, letting you know that everything's okay. Barry can play left field in the first inning so long as he plays first base or an infield position in the second and then a, or, or another inning. So long as he plays in the infield twice, then that color is going to change to showing you green go and no longer 
violating those minimum play rules. Um, so you want to uh, continue on in, in doing this for all the players in the lineup and for all of the innings. Uh, you, we've got 10 players here, so in this example, you don't have a bench player, but if you did, you would enter B for bench, and, uh, and they would be, as you see over here on the right side, placed on the bench instead of in one of these fielding positions. So now that I'm looking at this, let's bring uh, Mick into the game at the 11th spot, and I'll be the one out this game. So that way we have one bench player and 10 position players so we can make sure that minimum uh, play rule is adhered to and making sure that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of these kids are going to sit one inning uh, and then the rest are going to end up playing all the innings. Um, but no player would play more than one inning than any other player. So as we go down the list, we can uh, place these players in positions. And you know, for this example, it, it really doesn't matter. But what I do want to show you is if you have the Babe pitching, but then also Mark Shohei is pitching, that cell's going to turn red and warn you that the position is duplicated. And uh, you'll have to change that out in order to uh, make sure that you, you've got everybody in the correct position. So let's change Shohei to a catcher just for fun. Uh, then you've got Aaron Judge here. We'll put him in right center field. Some of these guys are going to be all over the field, so I'm just going to start going right down the list uh, to say Jackie's playing right field, Ted's playing first base, Mark is playing second base, Joe is at shortstop, and the Mick is at third base. So we've got our first inning lineup down, um, but we see that these pink uh, cells show us that the infield play rule has been violated so far. Okay, if Jackie here and Aaron each get two innings in the infield, then that color is going to change. So maybe we'll want to plan ahead and say, okay, Aaron uh, can play second base in the second inning um, and then maybe sit on the bench. And then maybe in the fourth inning, he'll play third base. And there we go. We've corrected that uh, violation. So now it's no longer pink. And we can move on filling in this matrix with the different positions. Okay, so I've filled in my matrix uh, with all of the player positions for the entire game, for all the six innings, and there are a couple of, of violations here. So you'll see the, the orange, this bright orange, where we have Joe pitching three innings in a row uh, in the same position for three innings is a violation in this particular division uh, that that they can't play more than two innings in a particular position so we have to change uh, that pitching position and switch them with another player so let's uh, let's put them in left field and since we have two left fielders now it shows us red so we're violating that position rule and we'll change this person to the pitcher and now that violation is cleared we also have a violation up at the top where Ken uh, is playing left center field, shortstop left center field, right center field, and right field, and then on the bench. So they haven't played their minimum two infield innings. So you need to change or, or put Ken in the infield one of those innings. And so you take a look of where you might want to put him, and let's say uh, in this inning we'll put Ken in shortstop and then switch him with the Babe, put the Babe in right center field. So now that violation is cleared. Uh, there's another bright orange one right here where Barry played left field in the first inning, fifth inning, and sixth inning. Again, can't play more than two innings in that same position. So in the end of the game here, let's just move him over to right field and move Johnny here over to left field and everything's cleared up. Uh, and lastly, this shows one more violation, this dark red, this uh, equal play rule violation where Aaron is on the bench twice um, but no other player is on the bench that many times. You see one, some players are on the bench once, some players are, aren't on the bench because we have 11 players in the lineup. So we need to make sure Aaron gets in the game. So we take a look at, at the fifth inning, who hasn't done, been on the bench yet. 
Um, and we see that uh, Shohei here hasn't been on the bench, so let's put him on the bench, and we'll put Aaron over in right center field. And uh, oh, by doing that though, it, it had alerted us that it's bright orange. He can't play right center field three times, so let's move him to left center field, and then change Mark over to right center field. So you could see how the the color coding of the uh, the conditional formatting here, where, where the color coding of these violations really helps you identify that you're sticking to the rules and now you've got your plan for all of the defensive positions for every inning. And then if we look over to the right here, you've got your lineup card for each player and each position they're going to be in for every inning, as well as the batting order. And way over on the left here, we, we show the counts of how many times each player has played each position. And as you fill in all these other games down here in, in these different tabs, those numbers will increase and you'll get to see if maybe one player is, is really playing right field a lot and you want to change that and give them some experience in other positions. And if we jump back here to the roster and tracking tab, you'll now see that Rick was not in the first game, so he hasn't played a game yet. He's still at zero, but everyone else was in the game. So now their incremental, their cumulative count for number of games played is one. And down here you can see Ken was batting at the top position, the number one position, one time. And Barry was in the second position. And over the course of the season, you'll see who's really batting at the top of the lineup more than the other kids. And it's up to you if you want to change that around and get some other kids more at bats. And again, here's a here's another look. This shows us okay. Ken batted first, so we can go down here and put Ken in game leadoff just for our own tracking. And take a look at uh, who was cleanup number four was the Babe. So Babe is getting a CU. And then the last batter in the lineup, the 11th batter, was Mick. So we'll put um, an L next to him. We're going to delete this data. This was just sample data from before. You don't need it. And then again, you know, over the course of the season, you'll be able to see who's been in leadoff a bunch of times, who's the last batter a bunch of times, and you can make adjustments. So if we jump back into the game that we were working on, game one here, there is this dotted line around this area of the screen where we've got the defensive positions and the batting order. And these are your lineup cards. And so what you do is you highlight these cells all the way down to this dotted line, this area here, and this is what we're going to print for our coaches and for the opponent. So we go to File and Print. and we want to choose instead of current sheet we're going to choose selected cells and then there's our lineup cards okay so you print two per page you can cut this in half and you can print a couple of copies of it to uh, distribute to the coaches and opponent and then you'll be organized and and it will make everything move so much more smoothly on game day when you know where every kid's going to have to go for every inning and uh, you'll have a great game